All right, January day 12, let's take a look under the hood. First, let's go to the drums. We have, we got a hi-hat here. Uh, there's actually no processing on it, that's unusual, but it is going to the drum group, which got which has, uh, bus nine has parallel compression, bus two and three are different size reverbs, two is a room verb, three is a medium-sized snare room reverb. Um, both of them have similar processing where they have the reverb, and then they have an EQ cutting off the highs and lows, and then they have a directional mixer for width, and then they have a compressor from the kick uh, to push it out of the way when the kick is happening, because it's all about space and that low end especially, and feeling the beat. Uh, and one way to really make sure you can feel the beat is to push everything out of the way when the beat happens. We have a tom here, this is Lindrum, we have a snare Lindrum and a kick Lindrum. Processing on these is similar to a lot of the other Januarys, especially when I'm using Lindrum ones. Camel Crusher, ooh, we have a tremolo uh, moving back and forth every half note for the toms. You can hear that if you listen to this song in headphones, uh, but it'll just move back and forth. And that was just to do like da 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 tom roll kind of thing. But um but um but um but um but da um Snare here. Uh, so this one I found was a little bit bright for the track, so I was doing a lot of stuff to kind of like dull it down. Uh, so I cut a, lot of, a little bit of the highs here. Not cut, but dipped. Um, shelved. We have a, a tiny little bit, 65 thousandths of a second, gated reverb for a little bit of size, OTT to pull it up, Camel Crusher to distort it, two transient designers, pulling down the sustain, adding some attack, and then the RC20 just to dull it a little bit, and the and then, uh, sorry, kick. Uh, Camel Crusher, two transient designers, one to pull down the sustain, one to pull down the sustain a bit. Ooh, and pull down the attack a bit. That's interesting, it's unusual. Don't usually do that. And then kick is of course being sent to bus one, which is my side chain. Drum sound like this. So you can hear the snare is a bit muted, but that has to do with the context of the song. Bass here, what do we have? A massive patch. Yeah, so this would be at least two oscillators. What is this? Yes, yeah, two oscillators. One is the actual bass sound that you hear, and one is this high frequency sound. One is this, uh, just for a bit of detail, uh, and I have a very long decay uh, envelope on the pitch of this, so that if you were to just like hold it, we have a low pass filter on it too, so that decays and gets rid of this, but if you were to hold this for a really long period of time, you would hear it fall 64 semitones. Uh, we've got a reverb on it, which is also... Um, Envelope two, which also has envelope two routed to it, which slowly takes the reverb away down to almost completely dry, but not quite completely dry. And you can hear the reverb slowly dies off as you hold the note. A lot of reverb at the start, and then it trails off. And that's just for more of like a reverby attack. And then we've got a sub under it, and I'm just using my uh, contact instrument here, sub 0808, not my contact instrument, I didn't design it. And those go to a uh, sub bass bus where I'm cutting 30 hertz, and I've got the track spacer coming from the kick uh, below 464 hertz. It's a random number, it's, it's you know usually just the low end. Uh, a lot of the time to decide, I'll look at the waveform of where the kick is hitting and where it starts to die off, I'll get rid of it, because I don't want to get rid of the high frequencies of stuff uh, with track spacer from the kick, that's what a, a side chain would be for. But I don't want to get rid of high frequency stuff, I just want to make room for the punch of the kick. Anyway, uh, up here I've got a chords bus, but this is really just all my synths and I was being lazy. We have our sus chord playing a F sharp minor 7, G major 6, and an A add 2. Like that sound, it's just an M1 preset, it's air mallet, and we've got a compressor, ooh, from the, the kick for some pulse. Here it is without the sidechain side chain compressor. Here it is with. Yeah, just enough to kind of hear it, but mostly feel it being moved out of the way. We have... Uh, two tracks doing the same thing, but processed in different ways, and it's a bell. It sounds like this. This is an M1 preset. 
So I've doubled the track here and I have a tape delay on it with only wet signal. And I'm processing the wet signal of the tape delay along with some automation here on the time, on the delay time. And so you get this kind of like get this kind of warbly time screw up effect. Uh, and I've processed this sound. First off, I have an OTT and Camel Crusher just to uh, bring up the reverb of it and compress and uh, distort it a little bit. And then we have the tape delay, which is doing that effect. We have a tremolo, which is moving it back and forth pretty quickly at a quarter note. We have chorus on it to uh, just change the sound of it a little bit from the original. And then we have a compressor coming from bus 19, which is actually the original sound. So the original sound is sidechain compressing this delay a little bit. And together they sound like this. And that's that. On to the next sound, what is this? Another M1 preset with wider on it because it's kind of a chord type thing. This one sounds like this with the drums. This M1 preset is called Air Mallet. I feel like I've used this before in another January. And then we have a second Air Mallet doing some arpeggio sound. Yeah, and the whole thing sounds like this. Yeah, just a little groove for January number 12.